Good morning. This is Matt Ingram with the Village Volume. Welcome to 1490 AM KRUI. I am here with Jasmine Estrada from the Rudoso Parks and Rec. Excited to have uh, uh, have you guys on board with us as we dive into the Village Volume here. So we have a special guest with us in studio today, Michael Fish, a local artist, entrepreneur, and all kinds of different things. So we're excited to to have him yeah. on board with us today. And uh, yeah, so let's dive into it. Jasmine. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. I want to first say that Matt sounds way different talking right here than he does normal. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. This is his radio that, voice. Your radio voice was much more silky smooth. It's kind of nice. Ooh. <laughs> when I first met Matt, it didn't come across that way. So yeah. Like, hi. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> like, sco- yeah. Well, kind I definitely want to hear that story again here a little bit later. But before we get into that, do you want to tell us a little bit about just like a brief introduction? Yeah, of- sure. Awesome. I'm, I'm local, local. So I was born in Rodoso and raised in Capitan. Um, I went up a step there and then um, <laughs> well, I've been around forever, been away well, and back. Uh, college new mexico state my degree is in art been doing art since i was a little bitty and other than that a shed hunt that's how matt and i met we like the mountains we've done many things together so far right yeah we got some uh some of we've been able to showcase some of uh your talents creating new art pieces in uh, uh, Midtown with uh, some of our right, mural projects murals, yeah. and stuff like that. So, yeah, interesting how kind of like the the locals find the, the center and common ground. And uh, I know when I met Mike, I had no idea that this guy was such a, a fantastic artist. I just saw him and his horses up in the middle of the mountains wondering why he was going into my spots. <laughs> yeah, so let's let's hear this introduction you know, story because so, well, I've, I've heard one side of it. So it turns out that Matt and I are both avid. Well, he's a hunter and outdoorsman, and we both shed hunt a lot. And so I had been spending uh, over a month in a certain area watching bulls, uh-huh. preparing for the shed season. As it got close, I had a friend from Houston who was going to come in, and so I was taking all of our camping stuff and everything on two horses. I was riding one and packing another, going up to the spot near where I'd been watching all the bulls and um, had seen no sign of humans the whole time until mm-hmm. about a week prior I saw a human track and a dog track. Anyway, I'm going up the trail just daydreaming about all the sheds I was going to find and be bopping along down the trail comes this guy <laughs> hiking with a dog with sheds all over his pack. And I was like, no way, what's this guy doing here? And why, why? It just didn't make sense to me. And I was kind of angry and upset at first until we got close. And lo and behold, it turned out to be mad. We end up talking and uh, sharing experiences. Spent an hour probably there BSing. Yeah. And, and nice. um, um, he had not found any, they weren't dropping anyway, but he had not found any new sheds. They were all old and really small chalks. Yeah, so, right, I felt, right, so I felt right. good about that. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. And so um, it was early. And it was fortuitous because that led to he was fixing to do his first Brudoso, like right around the corner. And um, we, right, it was like about yeah. a month later. Probably. Yeah, it was going to be a couple months later. Yeah. And so we got in um, cahoots and found out he's a creative, I'm a creative. He didn't know I did art, of course. And we, just in wrapping there, we talked about those things and ended up being at that show. And it was very successful for him and his organization. And then for me personally, it was really good. And that led to other things with Chili the Kid and um, then the murals and yep. everything else. So it's been a good relationship. But it was funny because it was right on the trail and um, somebody stealing my spot, which I definitely claimed. I, I, <laughs> I thought it was mine for yeah. sure. And then you guys became friends and partners and... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool. yeah. We're in cahoots now, so it's really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, I think it's cool to see. We have a bunch of cool, unique locals that are running around and uh, to be able to connect the dots with some like-minded and creative people. I know that uh, Fish has been a part of a lot of uh, my creative, just like you know, me and him are buddies and uh, uh, get to share that. Uh, one thing that I like to see is that these creative art places and uh, uh are important to a community For you sure. know one thing that i see with our mural project uh is now that uh, experience of going to midtown is shared on basically everybody's you know social media platforms with the riadoso mural that you did there right uh on our big wall and uh what a cool place that was i, I was looking through some pictures and it used to be kind of like this abandoned little stretch there right. and now it's 88 access from our public parking to our midtown district and we have a creative a place that's just uh, uh it's blown up i think it's one of the most photographed places in uh rio del so yeah i think definitely and since it's been um created and probably soon to be ever i would think because so many people stop there and with the platform of social media and taking selfies mm-hmm. and there's such a big push right now for public art especially in the sense of billboard type murals that say your name of the town right there's the uh, greetings tour there's a, a husband wife team that does it all over the country that's all they do and so to have one that not only does that but um holds up or stacks up against other towns so you know it doesn't matter if you go to houston or austin or wherever our, our mural is good 
And I think that that Great, gives yeah. a yeah a sense of ownership and pride in the community. And it's a destination now, not only for parking, but and for the bus stop, but for people to stop and hey, I want to go and take a picture in front of the Ridoso mural because everybody knows Ridoso anyway. Yeah. So it's interesting that um it can be such a um I, I think a source of pride really for not only people that take the picture and share it, but community and locals definitely because Absolutely. it's something that's nice and here and memorable. Uh, yeah, and it, it adds value. Um, Maybe not monetary, but certainly value. I don't Intrinsic, think, yeah. Yeah, when like, I see deer and stuff, it doesn't add any money to my life or value in that way. But, man, I, I still, even though I've seen a million deer, I still stop every time. Like, oh, it's a baby, you know. So it adds value for me. Yep. Definitely. Absolutely. I think it's a, just a great strategy that I see the village taking and just the organizations in general. We see murals start to pop up across a community. Right. And uh, I think that that's a cool a cool aspect. It adds a little bit of splash onto the walls without, without doing much to... Uh, you know, too much of the environment or anything like that. So I well, like it. Well, and they popped up in other places right outside of your mural project, which had uh, seven or eight murals, right? Uh, we commissioned in, in, uh, nine of them. Nine, right. Yep. So it started there. And you think about people when, when in conversation, when I bring up that, oh, I did a couple of those murals, it always like, oh, we've seen all those. And we took pictures and mm -hmm. how many people that you, you never even know all of them because you may not be tagged in it or just mm -hmm. come across it. And yet so many people take pictures of anything that's a visual art in our town. I think back to when I was a kid and it started with Dave McGarry, you know, doing his uh, sculptures down in the Downs. That's a big deal. It's huge. It's beautiful. It still attracts people. You want to stop by there. And now that we've moved that up into Midtown and now it's kind of trickling out as you go down for like Shitsmark, there's a um, mural, mural down there. Yeah. They did some murals down there on the uh, – By the Y, uh, Allsup's Y there. Yeah, the Allsup's Y. Trish Wade did an awesome cool mural Right there. on the glass company right yep. there. Right yeah. there. Then, they, then across the way there's a hotel they're, they're working on now mm -hmm. with a couple of wolves. And then the, even, even further down in the Downs, Downs, the um, it used to be uh, – it's the RV park there that, you know, they painted the entryway there. So they did lots of stuff. Yeah, I, I, It's just guys, growing and it's nice. Yeah, those guys are doing some cool stuff down there in the Downs. And I, I hate that I can't think of the name of the RV park that's down there that they do. And Slow Play. It's Slow called Play. Slow Play RV there Park. Yeah, yep. yep. those guys are doing some cool, cool stuff down there. So I like to see some, uh, some new. They came in from, I believe, from... Texas, Austin yep. area, somewhere yep. around there. Yeah. Yep. So if you if you guys are looking for some cool RV spots, I think you know it's a well established place, and they're doing some cool stuff down there too. So yeah, and it's not definitive yet, but I know that I met with them the other day to talk about doing a mural on on some of their walls there because they want to they're they're uh, enchanting it if you will, making yeah. it oh, a yeah. uh, photo op. They they love that. Everybody knows about the photo ops of having murals, and I think it's something that um, as people see the power of it, which you can't you can't um, you can't deny it, and you can't get away from it. Even though you may or may not like certain subject matter or what have you, when people want to come by there and take a picture, just be like, oh, I was here. And it's like um, – it's really caught fire I think everywhere right now. Right. So it's huge. I, I go to Houston a couple times a year, and I don't know if they're per se the mural capital of the United States, but there's hundreds of murals there, and it's just amazing. Um, they like have a mural district, and the, the – what is brought to the town is just um, – it, it, it's mind-blowing essentially, and I, I, I imagine that like here. You know, yeah. what it what it does for the community and what it does for people wanting. It's just another destination, essentially, when you have a cool mural. They're like, oh, while we're here, we're going to ski, we're going to gamble, we're going to check out the shops and the good food. Oh, we need to take a picture of the mural, too. So yeah. it's really interesting. It adds this experience, and I think that there's even more experiences to build off of art. And we have talked about uh, developing even something that ties regional art into tours and showcasing different regions across Lincoln County. Of course, showcasing the stuff there in Midtown Rio Do So, but there's other awesome art installments across the region that I think that once you start looking, you start seeing these opportunities to uh, uh, build creative places across the region. So I'm excited to see where it goes and get some like-minded people on board and some kind of like bigger picture thinking uh, uh, as far as where our creative installments can go. But I think you nailed it right on the head. One thing I know that I've been pushing for and would like to see is like a cool installment of like some bronze fixtures of like some cool elk. Yes. Uh, and I know that would come to fruition in the next uh, several years that we see some kind of cool uh, creative places that are going to happen down in the Midtown District. Well, it's like you and I have talked about like Sculpture Garden. I think it's mm -hmm. a wonderful idea and so cool that you can have areas where not only are there walls and paintings, but now you can go to areas where people can actually meander and sit and have benches and experience uh different media too like whether it's bronze or wood or found objects whatever but have these sculptures and if it's regional and directed towards the area it just adds a, another level of um it just another level of beauty and 
interest to yep. the area, I think. And I'm sorry, just to keep this going, is we just You're have, fine. once you throw, like, all this salt onto the steak, you know, like, yeah, you get these different flavors out of it. I think the same thing goes with when you visit a community is, like, you go to a community that hasn't changed in 20 years. Like, yes, there's this nostalgic part, but it's, like, catering to a new generation of consumers or visitors. You got to keep it unique and evolving and uh uh, so that's what I like. I like seeing uh, and being a part of Rio Doso and how it's kind of developed that changed, you know, making some changes and taking that mentality moving forward. Well, I think it grows and adds something to it. No doubt. There's, it never is bad to add something beautiful to your town or your area. And if it gets people coming for um, that purpose alone, because some people will come just to see art if you have enough of it and it's good exactly. enough. Yeah. And so it reminds me of when they did the um, the horses in New Mexico. There was a whole move with the little figurines mm -hmm. so everybody was painting them and doing them all around and then like if you go to carrizozo they have the donkeys i don't know if you've been there and seen that yeah, they have yep. the, you know they have them all over so certain areas have these niche things that are just beautiful and unique and ridoso has and can have more of that and it certainly adds in value and i don't it, it's one of those things like a yogi bear thing to me it's like you don't know you you don't know about it until you know about it you know it's mm -hmm. like so oh we didn't even know we wanted that until we had it right. you know it's like when you eat something delicious i didn't even know i like that and then so you see the art and you see the public art and it's like wow that's that's really amazing. It does add something to it, even though if you never thought about it, you would never think about it. So right. it's really amazing. And that's what I think is my favorite thing about public art is that it does introduce it to such a broad, you know, community. And you don't really have to necessarily know about it. I think it's a great thing once you kind of get the word out there and people are like, "Ooh, where's that? I want to go find that piece. But it's someone who's just walking down Midtown who can, you know, look up and see some of these great work or, you know, driving through town and looking at these wonderful art pieces. And so um, I don't know if you want to touch a little bit more on what public art might mean to you or what you, you know, hope it brings to communities. But I love that component. Well, I think it brings us first, it brings a sense of community because mm -hmm. everybody takes ownership in it at some point if you're from the community, right? whether you want to or not, at some point, it'll be somebody will bring it up and like, there's that tie of like, oh, oh, yeah, you have that um, and I'll just use mine because it's mine. <laughs> but, so you have that Billy mural. It's like, oh, yeah. And so it can be this topic of um, – it, it's a topic. So it becomes something that we both know about, we both touch on. And then you live here, and a lot of people don't even know who has done some of the murals. It's just theirs. It's like, oh, yeah, that's our mural. You know, and that's cool. So it's just, it, it does that. It beautifies. There's no doubt about that. It, mm -hmm. To me, that – like you take the wall where the Rodoso mural is. It, it was a cool wall just in general, just this neat arc wall. Well, then you add something to it, and it's beautiful. So, oh, yeah. you, you know, it goes from being just a slab of concrete, um, and not in a sculptural sense that it's like some concrete that's designed and, <laughs> and, and done in a way that can stand alone. So you add color to it, add subject matter. Now it's something that's beautiful and has pride, and the community can take pride in that. So I think that those things are um, just amazing to bring to any community, especially this one, because I'm from here, so I'm proud of it. Yeah. I'm proud of all the murals. I think they all add something. When I drive by, I still slow down. I watch them all being um, done, know about them all, and I still slow down and take pictures all the time. Yeah. And I see them daily, so it's interesting. Well, I think what it also does is, like you say, you take ownership in the community. You identify these murals. You identify the businesses that they're with. You know, and that was one of our strategies is creating these murals, you know, so you can identify them where they're at. Like, hey, that represents a business. And I know that, right. you know, the business owners, each artist had to work with the business owner, develop a unique idea mm -hmm. and then, you know, and then, you know, get that concept onto the wall. And right. uh, it was cool to see each one of those kind of develop through it. But I think going back to another kind of thing that Fish said earlier, it was being able to sell his product at like these special events. Right. And I know that when Brudoso popped off for the first year, uh, I mean, we were just kind of shooting from the hip. You know, we had everybody lined up and, you know, Fish, you took a big gamble coming out and setting up, uh, you know, at our with one of our booths. And I mean, you made some, you know, good sales and stuff like that and kind of opened Pandora's box for you and you know, to kind of uh, put the fire underneath your seat to continue to pursue art. Yeah, and at that time I was just, um, you know, I had, I had not um, uh, taken the leap per se um, in doing art full time. You know, I've been an artist forever and, and had done art always, but I was um, still shooting horses at that time. And so I was, that was the beginning of me being able to go ahead and go full time into saying I'm going to quit everything else and only do art. That's so awesome. Yeah, and it was because of being at that show and um, – uh, sold a couple of originals there and then painted live and the live painting sold. So that was really good. And those things, um, it, so it did open doors for me. And also the, the mural project continued to do that with the exposure that it got and people being able to see it and, and um, associate with that. Um, and I wanted to say too that uh, the the uh, businesses that 
or, or the business side of the murals. It adds a, a value to that too because of social media and how we all are so interconnected now and everybody um, can see what everybody does. So there's that idea that you can do tours and you can have another component to the town of what's there to do. So when you think about what's to do in Redosa, one thing that is to do is these um, um, tours of the uh, murals and mm -hmm. public art in general. Right. I know we've talked about building that more and working on that. Right. But we have a... We have it developed on our app, our Visit Riodoso app. Right. Um, uh, you know, all the midtown uh, mural stops that right. you visit. Right. Yeah. Well, and I know, so when I go to other towns, I always look for public art or mm -hmm. any art. And, and for me, our public art goes way beyond what's commissioned or done. I, I, I go all the way down to tagging and graffiti. I like it all uh, within reason. You know, nothing illegal that's done on private property and stuff. But, you know, <laughs> in the sense that it's done, and I have friends, it's funny because just the other day I got this discussion, they were like, somebody had taken spray paint out on a, this is way out in the forest somewhere, just done something on a rock, right? And not like the rock at Lincoln that everybody paints, but just out in the forest. And they were complaining about it. And I thought, that's interesting because my same friends that were complaining, they like the petroglyphs and they like the old ancient carvings and rocks. And I was like, so if you were back in those days, you probably would have been thinking, oh, I don't do that to our rocks. It's, right. So now it's art because it's 400 years old, but or it's, you know, it's historic and esteemed, whereas this guy's doing it now and it's considered uh, graffiti or tagging sure. or, 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 you know, slanderous in some way but it's not right. it's just something that's going to especially the graffiti is going to wash off essentially essentially you know so um but so i go to these towns back to the point and i, I look for art having the the uh, app in Redoso is so nice because you can go on there and find where it is so i hope more um pieces of public art get identified by that and more spots to go to totally. because it's when you go to towns you end up just driving all the streets looking for them you don't know and i have friends like did you see the one i'm like no i never found it you know <laughs> where is it yeah but it's cool to be able to log on there and be like oh cool so i want to go down that street and sure. this specific spot Definitely. so it's really a, a valuable thing in my opinion to use and and i like it for the idea of kids too i love kids that want to see art want to do art uh sparks creativity shows them what you can do that it's okay to paint on things and make yeah. it beautiful you know and it is cool to make pretty things so oh. it's a value so how long have you been doing murals? I know you've done art for a while, but murals in general, how long? I, well, I did my first murals. My wife was a teacher um, for many years, and so we were in Clovis, and I did murals at her middle school there um, on the interior. At, uh, I think a few of them are still standing, so I did some inside cool. murals, like three or four there. So that was back in like 19 – or uh, 19 <laughs> – 2000 – oh, maybe like 2002-ish, somewhere around there, okay. 2000. So a few then, and then a couple outdoor murals since – and then this project came up and did these. So awesome. for a long time, but not a whole lot, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, that's almost we, two decades. That's... We had no idea that we wanted to do murals. I felt like we just did the mural project because it looked good on paper. And as that thing developed, it just came together really, really creatively. You know, you bring in artists from Austin. We have them in from Alabama, from all across the country. Right. Like, what are you going to get? Yeah. You know, and that was like kind of the gamble. And you can't control the artists on mm -hmm. what they're going to put up there. You put the parameters around it. So yeah, it turned out great because there's a smorgasbord, right? There's a whole mix of different styles, styles and aesthetics. Exactly. And That's what I love. You know, you go down behind the, uh, the place there with the big bear and the barrel. It's beautiful. Yeah. And then the butterflies and, you know, all the way up to the big, huge James and Logan's, uh, mm -hmm. giant native head, you know, it's just, it's amazing. So, I think if you're visiting town, you know, you're coming in, it's Friday, you know, go definitely check out the murals yeah, take a in stroll. Midtown. You know, it's even cool to see the, the bronze horses down in the Rio Doso Downs, yeah. you know, like when, I mean, when I was a little kid, I remember driving by that and just being so fascinated with it. And I think us as adults, sometimes it's tough for us to like, look from the perspective of a child, mm -hmm. you know, and like that. That's what's driving where like, uh, you know, our families and what they're doing. Uh, we have the fairy tale box down on Three Rivers Trail where you can go and find the fairies on the trail. Yeah. You know, that's a fun activity to do. I didn't know about that. I want to do that. Well, <laughs> what is you, it? Uh, yeah, you it's know? a fairy, uh, fairy trail, um, but we actually just closed it earlier oh, this ouch. week. I know. he. It's all run by a volunteer. He carves these little fairy wow. houses and includes fairies, and there's like a, a map to find all of them along the river. It's really cool, but he takes this, uh, the colder months, to kind of take them all down and repair them because people open the doors and they'll break or they'll try to move the fairies and they'll break. So he actually takes the winter months, um, colder months, to kind of uh, take them and repair them and maintain them. So That's awesome. Yeah, so look for try it next again spring. In, in the spring. Exactly. I definitely will be fairy hunting. 
Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> well, I think there's all kinds of unique ways that we can do it. We've just really, like, for me, cognitively, have really started to brush on those on the tip of it, you know? Well, when we speak of kids, so I, I've done lots of live painting. That's what really got me into it. That was the initial push before meeting you and, like, doing the murals and stuff and the shows. But um, uh, at these live events, no no adult, because we're, we get boxed into these things of, like, don't touch, don't look, don't ask type things. It's mm-hmm. we, we get real confined, I feel like. But uh, numerous times I've had kids come up and they just take a paintbrush and start. And, of course, parents freak out. And I'm really cool. I'm like – or, I mean, I'm not really cool, but I'm open to it. Like, hey, go for it and let them paint with me on the paintings and stuff. That is awesome. They did it at, at uh, Brudoso. Some kids – the it was a piece – they had already bought the piece and told me what they wanted to paint after I started. And I went in and went that direction. Some kids came and painted. I thought it was great. So let's paint on it. And so that curiosity and, and, and inquisitive nature is really neat that you see it in kids. And, and like mm-hmm. Matt said, I, I do agree. You forget about that and you drive by and just, yeah. it's just day to day and nine to five. And what are we doing? Good and stuff. you see these things and it opens up, especially if there's kids around it. Mom, let's go take a picture of that. And every time I drive by any of the murals, you see families out there taking pictures, you know, and right. kids, kids push that a lot or the parents kind of relive that and say, let's get the kids in front of it, you know, so it's yeah. really, it's really, really positive. Yeah. Like, there's nothing. Other than positive about that, it's good. Well, I think that uh, we're working on another creative project, which brings me kind of to my next point, which I'll, I'll, I'll plug is our tile fundraiser project. Okay. Uh, the Rudos of Midtown Association has launched a, a, an engraved tile project where you can commemorate, uh, you know, a namesake, a, a, a short quote, whatever the case. An uh, event. An event. Uh, yeah. Commemorate your pet's birthday. You know, we've had some pretty interesting ones so far, uh, and our our directive with the uh, with the fundraising project is to do more creative uh, art projects. And awesome. so uh, we're getting this off. So if you visit RiodosoMainStreet.com, uh, you can uh, find the link to buy a tile on that and uh, go on there and purchase a tile. And uh, uh, the the funds generated through the tile are gonna uh, we're gonna do some uh, another art piece down in uh, Midtown. What can you put on the tile, Matt? You know, you could put anything that's uh, non derogatory <laughs> nor political propaganda. But, but words only, right? Yeah, words words only. I tried to get Matt to do because I'm going to buy some tiles, of course, and support the cause. But I wanted to put my logo on it, and he told me absolutely not. Yeah. So that got <laughs> shot down. Well, I've I've learned how to sell tile. I've done you know everything from beer wine festivals, to, you know, project development. Now I'm a tile salesman. So <laughs> get your tile, commemorate your family. Uh, I know that some people are very strong into uh, yeah, just some supporting their family and uh, I know that a lot of people have traveled here over the years so I know it's going to make a great holiday gift or people um, get married here and engaged yeah. here all the time yeah. so that'd be a great yeah I don't want to there are some pretty creative ones already and I don't want to let it out of out of the bag before oh. it goes up on the wall you can there, just tell us you one. what's one creative one you know no, you, can propose on a brick. you know there you go <laughs> would that be classic be right there cool. you know so uh no I just think that these these projects and the way that they work and I know my organization does is to support the arts mm-hmm. and that's been driven off of our main street uh platform since I was hired on and uh, I think it's it's cool they see it on the state side of things I think that New Mexico has always had this rich culture of art, whether it's from the Native American petroglyphs to, uh, you know, anything that the new age things that are, are that are happening. You know, it's a uh, uh, Rio Dosa or Rio Dosa. New Mexico is, is just rich on that. Uh, back to the mural point and, and public art in general, I think um, it's layered, right? So you have Rio and there's different layers of things you can do here, what you might come for and just it could oh, go yeah. on. Everybody can have a different reason of why Rio Good and great. There's some things that are um, consensus, right? Like the racetrack, the casino, uh, skiing, skiing right. uh, parks and rec type things that you guys run Doors. the lakes, um, things like that, activities. Um, however, I think about like Madrid or Madrid, whichever, however way you choose to say it, you go there and it's all art, completely public art. Some of it folk art, naive yeah. art, good art, fine art, all of it's great. But um, not, not that it'll ever be like that, but that's just – that thing is completely layered with art, and it also has that layer started, and I feel like if it just continues to grow, it gets to be something like that. It's just – if you think about that, everybody Another talks layer. about, well, let's go there just to see the art. And, yeah. um, you know, a lot of people just dismiss it, don't even – or, or you, it's not so much dismiss if you don't think about it. Right. But, but, when you, but then, then when you see it, it's like, wow, we do have that. It is here, and it is something that can add so much value to it because it's just another thing that on the on the days when you're in between something or not doing anything, like let's take a stroll. And some people won't stroll just to stroll. But if there's purpose, like me, I just won't yeah. go. I don't tend to just hike to hike. I want to hike to go find a shed or to see jerks like Matt on the trail, <laughs> right. take my spot. You know, well, 
And I feel like Matt is much closer than one fist away from the microphone. I just want to say that. <laughs> it, it looks way here. closer. I'm can you, can you do an example? Show us if you're actually. I'm, I'm over here doing the bolt dynamic yeah, like, talk, like, talking yeah. scenario. Like it feels like his, we need to change his filter because he's like right on it. But. Yeah. Well, what I was thinking is you we'll even, scram. you know, one of the most creative art pieces, and I, I don't know, I'm going to say it's like been developed here, but it's generated a huge economy for Rio Doso is the carved bears. Oh, yeah, sure. My oh, goodness. Yeah. Like, you Mike know, Free, you, way back when I was a kid, I worked for him definitely. at Furs, and he was one of the first guys. I don't know if you know Mike Free or not, but he was he was one of the first guys doing the bears down in the downs, and he worked at the it was furs back then, and he was doing those on the weekend and just took off. Well, you are creating an art uh, craft, you know, anything that is made in New Mexico is the best type of economy for re, uh, for New Mexico, right? And it's because it's like you're basically generating you know something out of nothing, turning water into wine or a canvas into a you know, a, a you know, a multi thousand dollar piece is that you're generating an economy, a, you know, a taxation for the state. They like to push that concept. Uh, but uh, um, yeah, you're just turning water into wine. And that's what I love about art. Well, we were talking about the value in terms of just being just valuable and just in general. But then when it comes to monetary and business side of value, obviously, if you have something that gets somebody to your storefront, mm -hmm. it, it increases the chance of them saying, well, let's go inside and check it out. Or if you have something that says, wow, we've been looking at art all day. Let's go by the art galleries now and check it out. Or let's call up that artist. And so I think it adds a lot of value in that way, too, when it comes to the actual business side of it. Um, and then there's obviously different things that can um, spring off of that, whether it be prints or the sales of right. different art and art types from those things. And um, it just continues to grow and spiral from that on the That's true definitely. value in terms of you know money side. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think that I, I mean, I've seen your artwork kind of in a few places now and every time I see it I'm like oh, I really need to go and like look at some of his print work just because I feel like I, I want something I feel like you just commissioned me to do an original is that what I heard <laughs> there you she, go. she just said I've seen a lot of your artwork oh. and I need to buy an original so on that note we're going to take a quick break <laughs> well and... I, I know that you guys have some cool projects set up with fish so you yeah, guys want to stay, stay tuned stay with us here and uh, uh, as we bring fish back on here to talk about some other unique projects that we have going on definitely we'll be right back Welcome back to 1490 KRUI. We are here on the Village Volume with Michael Fish. And uh, before I get myself into, commit myself into buying a piece, we're going to go into your signature. And I don't know. I more, more, more my little logo guy, not my signature. My signature logo. is my F, yeah. Okay. So it's just the so F. That, okay. Yeah, so my signature is my F that a lot of people, um, it started, of course, I used to sign it Michael Fish then. Michael J. Fish at one point, and then Fish, and it's gotten And now it's small, just an F. Just an F, yeah. I have an affinity for um, telephone poles and, and high lines and stuff. like. It's just They just freak me huh. out mentally when I see a bunch of them, especially. I just I get frazzled and can't handle it, like, you know, but I love <laughs> them. I just have this uh, silos, bins, all those things, but especially cool. uh, uh, telephone poles and stuff. So my F just played right in. I used to draw a lot and paint a lot of um, telephone poles and wires, just in sketches primarily, nothing finished. And uh, so my F... Kind it of looks like that. Yeah, a lot of people even say, like, it looks like a telephone pole. I'm like, what well, kind of is? But it's also <laughs> an F. You know, so when somebody says, well, why an F? Well, my last name's Fish. So it's like the first letter. But my signature nice. guide, so um, yeah, a lot of people have seen indeed. it. And yeah, like a skeleton. It looks like a skeleton. They call it Birdman, skeleton guy um, thing, whatever. And so, you call it? Well, I call it the Brody. So the Brody. yeah, it stems from my son. My son's name is Brody. And um, he's 17 now, which is crazy because I don't look nearly old enough to have a 17 year old. But um. Depends no, on but, what perspective. You know. Yeah, which which angle you get me at. <laughs> I mean, like in low light situations, I don't look that low. <laughs> so when Matt first saw me, he definitely thought I wasn't old enough, you know, mountain man. <laughs> but so the Brody comes from um, my son has autism. And so when he was young and we were going through the diagnosis process and my, my wife knew from an earlier age before I ever even thought there was anything amiss or different. Oh, is that him. because she's a teacher? Do you think? She I think because she's a mom. Huh? I think because she just knew. She just had that <laughs> intrinsic mom thing, you know, that was just uh, innate. Um, and I'm just a dumb guy. I was just like, what are you talking about? Like, he's great. He loves us. And, <laughs> and he does. But so we were going through all that. And I noticed so we started learning more and more about um, isolation and the and the differences of somebody who's on the spectrum. And, and, and Brody is. And, and, uh, and it was really this lonely thing for me and this thing of him always being with us, but perhaps not with us to, to a sense. And I had lots of pictures and stuff. And so I just... I, I was out shoeing horses and had just gotten some, uh, I've always liked skulls and I'd gotten a, a horse um, head. And so I, I was drawing that and playing with it. And then I just went ahead and started drawing it on Brody and, and um, just over him and stuff and sketching him, how he stands, his mannerisms in terms of physicality. 
and then putting that on there. And it just made so much sense to me as this thing of like, um, I felt like and still feel like he has a mask on. And so his mask is that a lot of people don't get to see it. They might just see aspects of him that um, they may say, oh, yeah, I get it or don't or what have you. But for us, we, we he takes that mask off and we get to see Brody full Aww. on and we see the beautiful things that a lot of other people don't in, in, in snapshots. And then it became more um, deep for me in terms of everybody or far reaching rather. Um, it was always deep for me, but it became more far reaching because we all have masks. And I thought about that. And I think that's why so many people Absolutely. connect to it because I've I've done a lot of that um, in it's it's public art that wasn't commissioned, we'll say. So people have seen it around a lot of places, and I've just started introducing it in my fine art. And um, I think it relates to a lot of people because the the way he's drawn it sometimes can be somber or it can be – it emotes a lot of different things, I think, for different people. But one thing it is is that we all have that hidden thing, like whether you are a public speaker and you, you put on this mask or you're in uh, in a field where you can't – say curse words, say I know friends that we all cuss to some degree, but then you don't in front of certain people. Or you, right. you just put on these masks, and then so to take it off and have it – uh, be who is underneath there. And, and this one never is taken off. So it's interesting because I think a lot of people connect because of that. Like, oh, I've, I've felt that way before. Oh, I've, I've sensed Absolutely. that. Or like him letting, I draw him letting go of balloons a lot. And he's dropping things out of his hands a lot. And so people see that as, is it taking something on? Is it letting it go? And, you know, my, my grandmother just passed. And so I, not, not literally, but I mean, somebody might be saying that and say, you know, I felt that, I felt that way. Like I was letting go of this or, or accepting that, you know, and um, I think those, him specifically in this figure do that for a lot of people and, and invite that. And so I think that's why it's so um, uh, far reaching in that sense. That's, but that's where he came from. Yeah. He came from my son. So it was just the sense of drawing and it was always personal at first. I always, I've got thousands of sketches of that. That was just for um, me and Brody and Dion, my wife. So we, it was just that. And then when I wanted to bring it to the public first, it was anonymous because it was more stuff that was just done out on dilapidated buildings or what have you. And then um, as I started gaining uh, a following of him, so to speak, um, mm -hmm. I decided to bring him into my fine art. So now that I've done him on a few paintings and sold those and prints and stuff, it's like, it's really interesting. It's going to be a, a thing that I push forward with. Yeah. So that's, awesome. so that's the Brody. That's such a cool <laughs> yeah. story. Yeah, I would have is. never have guessed that with just, you know, looking at the. Yeah. You see it, you see the, uh, uh, the drive and the promotion behind it. And, you know, I know fish you on a, a, a independent and individual level, and just admire your patience that you have for so much. Like I get to see Brody in these pictures with him uh, with a, you know, a Sharpie mustache. And so, <laughs> right. you know, really unique and creative ways. And he is himself and, and you are your ways. And uh, you guys are a good family. And just like it's cool to have that type of local uh, that local support around, uh, around, you know, the kind of the community of autism, cause it's, it's definitely out there. And, um, well, I think it's something that's pervasive now in the sense that it's touching more and more people, you know, it went from right. one in 166 to one in 100 or whatever it is now. And so, so many people are affected by autism. It's hardly, you can hardly get away from saying, I'm not familiar with that at all because everybody knows somebody that knows somebody, something yeah. like that six degrees of separation type thing. And for us, it's, it's intimate, you know, we, it's every day, all day. And so it's something that I think, I don't, I don't know, you know, if you don't know the story behind the Brody, which um, nobody, very few people do, maybe more now, but um, yeah. the, um, it's something that just that figure in and of itself, like Matt and I, we've had conversations about how it touched him in a certain way. It just does something. But then I think when you add that layer to it, it'll make a lot of sense for a lot of people that like, oh, I kind of get that. And I see that um, in, a, in a different way that can be applied to me, but they can see, see and sense and have a, a real connection with the idea of, um, oh, my little cousin has autism. I, I see that, you know, and so yeah. that's where it stemmed from for me. So I think it's something that's powerful and and um, and good and positive that it's not it's different. It's not bad. It's different, you know. Yeah, and right. that's what's most important to me is that it's like you know a lot of people always refer to him like I said the bird man, and I guess essentially it is because it's a bird skull with a with a antler. But um, I think it's just important that it's um, it's just different, you know, like yeah. a lot of things. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, just I mean, that's that's how most art is. You know, it it gives meaning everyone takes away a different meaning. And so very rarely, I think that we actually get an, a true definition or a true description of how the piece was created. So Right, especially something for, personal, right? Yeah. Like there's something that's just, oh, I drew a yucca, like probably nothing to it. Unless <laughs> it just turns out that yucca grew on the grave of Billy the Kid, you know, which would be really cool. You mean the but, pineapple well, you on the rock isn't mean something? Well, that did mean something. Remember, that was quite a that was quite a thing. Is pin pineapple pen, right? Or, wow. Or what was that? Wait, what pineapple on a rock? <laughs> pineapple on the rock. So the rock at Lincoln, you know, it's been. Oh. I, I remember that being painted since I was a kid. I don't know when that rock was put there when that highway was redone or what have you, but I remember being little bitty and, uh, you know, like kindergarten age and seeing Beastie Boys written on it. So that was my first <laughs> remembrance of that and different people tagging it and stuff. And it's just grown up over the years. Like the layer, I don't know if you've ever been close to it, but the layers of paint on that thing are just 
it's amazing. Pretty thick. Oh yeah, it's just crazy. And I've done several um, complete murals on the side of it. It always gets painted over. Matter of fact, I, mean, I do the Brody on there a lot, and um, somebody continues to go on it and and turn him into a girl. And so it's the, and my <laughs> wife and I love it. I, I think it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> awesome. I go by after I do him on there. I always go by like a couple days later because I know whoever does it will have done it. Right. And I'm, I want to meet them and tell them like I want to I want to steal your character because they put a little <laughs> ponytail on him and a dress, and it's just so cool. I love it. So it's really interesting. People just go over and over, and it just is this great thing, you know. Well, and I love that it's like not like it, it's not upsetting. Like you guys are sharing this uh, space and almost like enjoying each other's artwork. Yeah, and, awesome. and it's it's ever changing. It's fluid, right? You know yeah. that rock is there. That I don't know, hundreds of thousands of people a year drive by that. You mm-hmm. know, go through Lincoln, they pass by it, and everybody that has a spray can, or if they don't this time, they probably will next time. <laughs> or sharpies or pens. There's writing on it, and everybody stops, or lots of people do anyway. Right. And when we talk about photograph, no telling how many pictures of that has been taken over the years. I know that when I've been there, I've seen posers there doing um, pictures with what I've painted or what I'm painting currently there. I've met several people just out there because used to it felt like it was cool to do it at night and feel like a bandito, you know, and be kind of <laughs> like, yeah, like I'm painting this rock that everybody paints. And like nobody cares if you paint it. But so <laughs> now I just go in the day and do it. But, you know, um, everybody stops and paints over and you, you have to expect that it's going to be gone. You know, it's not it's not forever. It's something that's going to. So get your picture because it's going to leave. So. Well, I know Good that, know. you know, some other creative spots that you've picked across even the state, you know, to, to operate off. And I'm sure that you get like kind of a thrill out of, yeah, uh, you know, out of it. Well, now that it's more public in terms of my guy, like I have him on my mask. Matt has a mask here and um, yeah. um people see it. Yeah, I, I hand drew it on my hat. Um, Yeah, Matt's mask looks really cool. So when people <laughs> see that first thing, they're like, hey, I've seen that around. And what everybody wants to know what it is, of course. And so I do in person tell the story. And uh, but they always ask what it is. Like, oh, I've seen it here. I've seen it there. And um, mainly on my route of travel, you you might see it on some um, old things that are dilapidated and falling down, or a rock here and there. So uh, it is neat to see it that people recognize and see it or Definitely. send it to other people. You know, and I've had people introduce me to people sharing it online and stuff. You know, that I didn't even know about because oh, cool. it's not like they know who did it or tagged them or anything. So right. it's really interesting. So well, I think it's uh, it's cool doing that. But then it's also I know that uh, you guys have some uh, uh, some future projects. Uh, yep. That you guys are looking at uh, maybe coordinating with if uh, well I was painting trash cans this morning because yeah. uh, Moon Mountain Golf Course or the disc golf uh, there there there's I don't know how many trash cans completed ten or eleven yes I took three of them I know but I volunteered to do as many as they will let me um so gonna be working on those and add highlight and color and art to um, exactly and that's to a trashy situation <laughs> <laughs> but, so it's cool it's even better nice to go throw fun. your art in nice you know it's just these <laughs> clear plastic tubs that now have art on them and like I. I think it's beautiful. You can't beat it anywhere. Anywhere I go where there's something artistic, I think it's just beautiful. So, I agree. Um, and it doesn't. And it's never bad to be like. I, I don't know how anybody could ever take a detraction away from that. Like, oh, it's oh, it's oh, I went to throw my trash away and it's painted all beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like that? No, I I think we should stay with just the yeah. It's kind of cool, you know, yeah. because of course it's cool. It yeah. looks awesome. Like let's paint everything. I think you know. So Absolutely. I hope to see that we get uh, some more of your art in the uh, the district at uh, another location or. Yeah, so we are currently working with Michael as well for a potential bathroom mural. So Wingfield Park. we're going to change the, the bathroom selfie game. Yeah, so Wingfield Park has some beautiful bathrooms. And, and um, it feels odd to say that, right? Like, I went in the bathroom. It's so beautiful. But <laughs> so you go in there and... and for um, public restrooms. Yeah, think, for public yeah. restrooms. They're nice. Um, uh, Just like the Midtown one, it's nice. and it's uh, But they're that white and stark. And I remember Rodney, the uh, director of Parks and Rec, I, uh-huh. I told him, because we've been friends... Uh, uh, a lot of people probably don't know, but Rodney. Did you guys meet outdoors on a hike too? No, Rodney and I went to high school together. He's he's quite oh. a bit older than me, but um, no, he's <laughs> he's a couple years older than me. And Rodney, um, you wouldn't think so because he's not a particularly um, he's not like a big. You wouldn't think lineman, but he was one of my linemen. I was quarterback, and he was a lineman. What? And, and Rodney's tough and mean. Fun right? fact: Friday, I had yeah. no idea. Yeah, when you go back to work, you can tell him and, and mention how mean he was because he was a mean guy. He's tough. All right. So, uh, yeah, it was no, he's he's calmed down. He's a lot. He's older now, you know. So anyway, I mentioned to him like, man, these bathrooms are nice, but it's just so like blah. You go in there, just I almost get seasick going in there because it's just that white, just just blah. And how cool would it be to splash some color in there and make it just something that's enjoyable while you're there? And and yep. I think that speaks to when you think about creative forward thinking. Back to this idea, there's lots of aspects about that. But one thing is when you go to a town and you don't want to have anything that comes away that's that's not awesome or that's bad. So I, like I go a lot of places and it always is weird when you go in there and like you know like the bathrooms are so gross like why don't they clean them or make them nice so i don't know if other restrooms have this or not but it would be awesome to be amongst everything else so you come away from redoso you know like man redoso was cool huh and yeah they got murals and i heard that fish guy paint some awesome stuff there <laughs> but 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 then also like 
even their restrooms are painted. It's yeah. amazing. Like that's that's awesome. So I think when you see things that are followed through from A to Z, not just like let's stop at G. Right. Like mm-hmm. let's just stop right here and it's really cool, but this part, eh. So I think that that's why the trash cans are so um, inviting to me, and I volunteered to do that with T-Bone because yeah. I think that that's something where that's that's crossing your T's and dawn your I's. You mm-hmm. go all the way down to the fine details. You know, exactly. you don't forget about those little things, and it's like, wow, even those things they have nice. Yeah. You know, whether it's painted or um, decorated in some other way, it doesn't. Like even our fire station, you go by there and look at that huge mosaic. Right. Not a lot of fire stations have awesome mosaics that are 100 or 50 feet tall and 100 feet long, whatever that thing is. Yeah. It's awesome. It's beautiful. Yeah. It just looks, you know, amazing. And so I think when you add those levels of detail throughout, that to me is something that's um, important for the town and it carries through and just shows a level of excellence all the way top to bottom. Absolutely. And, and, and so when it comes to the restroom, some people might scoff at that and be like, why would you paint a restroom? Like that's, you know, they would poo-poo it, so to speak. <laughs> but I think it's beautiful and it adds Quality. something that's just like, oh, yeah, like the outside's nice, inside's nice, everything's great. Like we yep. we don't we don't skimp. Everything's awesome in Redoso. So I, I, for me, that's the vision of that and going behind and forward with that. Totally. Yep. Well, we see we see these installments in so many different capacities. We look at the botanical garden that's Mm -hmm. up at the Wingfield Park. If you haven't had a chance to go check that out, most definitely let the kids play on the xylophone right out there. I know that I've played some tunes out there. Yeah, mine's horrible, but I have done it. You know, I think we're all we're all (laughs) guilty, and uh, that that's just such a a unique place. And uh, um, I know that once we get back on pace, it'd be exciting to see uh, the special events happen there. The usage of those public restrooms are you know in the thousands and people can see your art. You have a captive audience. Well, yeah, literally, yeah, they're not going anywhere. So I mean, used to used to it was newspapers, right? And then it was our phone, and now it's like, let's just look at the walls. That's yeah. pretty cool. But I think what's interesting about that is, is you will find if somebody was a people watcher, if you just stood, like Matt and I have talked about how cool it would have been to have a um, a camera on the any of the murals, but let's say specifically the Ridosa mural, right. just to see the comings oh gosh, and goings of how many, cool. what a neat view to be to time lapse that and just show, wow, just constantly people stopping, taking people waiting. You know, right. so I think Special what you'll moment. see is at Wingfield Park, you have an event and just, um, you know, set a camera. I, I don't know if that's too intrusive or weird, but <laughs> yeah. set a camera up right there outside, <laughs> not inside the toilet, but have it outside the restrooms and watch people come out. They're like, you got to go pee. I don't need to pee. Got to go pee, but I don't need to pee. I feel like got to go look at the art. Like, yeah. let's go take a picture. It'd be so weird. Just like Jasmine was saying earlier, that's going to redefine the selfie game in the bathrooms. You know, it's, it's not a bunch of drunk chicks taking pics anymore. It's going to be like guys in there. Do I look good in front of Billy or how about this one? You know, or whatever might be in there. So yeah. I feel like it's, the lines at the bathroom are going to be longer. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Cause I think people will, will uh, linger. They might take their time oh, yeah. and look through stuff and it changes it, but it's just interesting. Like it's a whole new dynamic to something that we've all known and is, is, um, you know, like an off putting subject matter. Typically like, you know, it's just, kind of stinky around there now it's going to be beautiful yeah. Yeah. yeah well and that's something parks and rec always tries to do is continuing to improve everything that we do well definitely know? that's and that's yeah well, and the, the trash cans I, I know i've said it like five times but i just yeah. love the idea of the trash cans when t-bone brought that up i i, I jumped on it immediately yeah. as a volunteer to do that and i told him i do every one of them um and I, maybe more people will jump on now knowing about that they do have trash cans available so hit up t-bone yes. and maybe get one and do it because i think it's neat too to have variation right so mm-hmm. you can't have the same guy doing everything and so it's great to have Different arts. That's what makes the mural project so great. There was nine different artists, nine different murals, Damn. variation, spice it up, looks great. Yep. But how cool it'd be to be going around there throwing your disc off and Checking having art. Smart. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. I, I think there should be sculptures throughout there. I, you know, I just think it's beautiful. It could be awesome. Absolutely. So Matt was talking about the fun special activities. And so this oh, yeah. weekend. <laughs> he says fun. I say fund. Fun. Well, it is a fund raising event. Yeah. So. That's a fu- yeah. Is it fundraiser or is it fun- fundraiser? It's fund raiser, right? The <laughs> emphasis on fun and add the D in there. Yeah, we have a, a special fundraiser going on uh, this weekend, and it's in coordination with uh, Noisy Noisy Water Winery is hosting yeah. it out at the uh, Enchanted Vine from 11 to 7 this weekend. So what I'm, is it? I'm excited to be a part of it, and it's so, their uh, Tidy Whitey uh, charity fair. Yeah, so their Tidy Whitey wine has always been a fundraiser um, wine, a charity wine, and so they've given – certain proceeds of that the wine sales to a certain charity and for the past couple years it has been the same charity but this year they're doing this new event with a few local charities so rma is going to be out there Um, the humane society of lincoln county will be out there 
I know that there's going to be a couple more out there's there. There's a couple others. And, and I know that they're going to have uh, live music mm-hmm. kind of going on. And I know that uh, uh, you could $5. Your $5 uh, entry fee will entry, be donated yeah, to. And, and then you can donate it to uh, your favorite charity that's out there doing it. And I mean, the Humane Society, it's like, it's tough for us all to go, to kind of go <laughs> up. I'm like, oh, you know, take take care of the dogs, take care of whatever your favorite yeah. charity it is. Um, whatever and speaks to your heart. Come out and to support uh, the Noisy Water Wine uh, and winery and what they're doing out there and so yeah we'll be set up i know that we're going to be uh have a booth going out there and we're going to be showcasing a lot of what our organization does and supporting that public art uh, uh you know working with uh with michael and the multiple artists that we've worked with through the course of the organization and uh, uh also highlight our tile fundraising project again there uh just ways that we could kind of generate uh generate some revenue and another right. thing I'm not familiar with the tile raising thing. What is that? Oh, the tile fundraising project, <laughs> so MainStreet.com, where you oh. can find your uh, – commemorate you your uh, uh, a namesake tile and engraved tile at the Midtown bathroom. Could I put so something funny on my tile? You can put whatever you want. It will be going through a vetting process. Could I say I shed better than Matt? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I say it's a uh, uh, $100 Challenge. to put it up, uh, but if you want to get it taken down, it would be $1,000. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> no, but uh, uh, we got that. Uh, it's a kind of an, a, a cool way for us to raise funds. That's another thing that uh, we're going to go to the charity fair, so we'll be out there this weekend. And, and I uh, have an idea. Uh, I, I, well, I want to tell you something about uh, the, the tile thing real quick, a okay. little sidebar, because Matt's really on top of his game, and so uh, when the, when the um, mural – um, competition and, and, and initiative was going on. I guess there was a lot of emails for people to vote, and so you had to do an email to do that. So now there's this, um, what do you call it when you have an email? Database. Yeah, database of emails. Well, so I had several friends, like I think three or four friends, send me um, screenshot text messages of they got emails saying, hey, would you like to contribute and and, um, and uh, support this cause and do the tile um, initiative? And so and each one of them put something derogatory about me on there. Like, this is what my tile is going to say. And I was like, so then that's when Matt told me it's a hundred dollars to buy the tile and a thousand get taken down. So I said, you won't let them do that. Right. And he said, well, it's a thousand bucks to you if you want to not have that tile put up. You so know, I can make some more money. Yeah, I was telling him we'll put them up with uh, bubble gum. Yeah, and then, you know, so you think it's real, and then you write your check, and it's like, oh, we, we weren't really going to do that, but still, yeah. yeah. So we, we've always really tried to push that envelope in creative uh, ways to generate funds. You know, we don't uh, – we're a standalone organization, and so really our big drive was our special events, mm-hmm. and it was able to really – after a couple of successful uh, uh, events, we're able to really kind of reinvest those funds back into the district. And that's the way we're able to do the uh, the mural project to build the Midtown Commons Plaza. We also had village public support on that. Mm-hmm. But even this bathroom project that we just refacilitated where we uh, built out the kiosk project as well as the extension of the roof line and where we have some potential other creative place in, in, in Midtown there. And so it's just cool to see an organization that supports that. And it's cool to be a part, you know, like me and uh, the team of board members that I have uh, uh, with me, how we just really kind of have a creative, uh, collaborative tactic to come up with the, these ways to draw it. So we actually, uh, the Midtown Association, so uh, we've gone to the Tile Fundraising Project to generate funds, and we also generate funds through grant writing. And that's where uh, I take it upon myself to, to grant write. And uh, we just were successful at receiving $10,000 in from the New Mexico Oil and Gas uh, nice. Association. So we're excited to work with them uh, in coordination with our Rio Doso so Main Street series. Series. Awesome. And so it's a video series where we promote 12 uh, businesses in the Midtown District with four micro videos. And we really go in with the businesses and work their social media campaigns with them, really engage that, you know, digital kind of workforce, you know, get them focused and concentrated on that. Um, even if they have some employees during slow times that would want to take that on. So just these creative ways to, to, to do that. So uh, cool. we really had to go to the drawing board at how we raise funds. So again, make sure this weekend, if you're in town, is to go check out the Enchanted Vine um, that's off of the old highway to the airport or the highway to the airport. Yeah. Well, and speaking of Main Street, I want to say one thing real quick. Oh, that, or, no, go, go, ahead. Ahead. go right ahead. No, I was going to ask about um, possibly a contribution to this charity event. Yeah, what's up? Don't Donating a, a piece of art, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. Help uh, them raise some more funds. Yeah, that sounds great. Definitely. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll, I'll donate Jasmine's piece of what? art. What? <laughs> no, no, you no, get yeah. Jasmine, no. you can't negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I would definitely do that. I think that especially if it's um, I love the um, 
you guys didn't mention all the causes, but I think the uh, the pet the pet one. The, um, I think that the humane society. The humane society. I'm always an advocate for that and a fan. You know, I um animals. I love animals. I have several dogs and a bazillion cats, which I don't like cats, but I have a lot of them. But um, I like cats. But yeah, I would definitely would do that. Um, a small piece that maybe could be auctioned off or, or raffled yeah. there at the place. They could sell raffle tickets, perhaps. I, I mean, it's not my event. I don't know, but that'd be up to. Well, we met the organizers, and then I'm sure if you wanted to team up with RMA, you could talk to Matt. I'm a board member for the Humane Society as well, so if we wanted to team up that way. Well, I would donate a painting for that, and if they wanted to somehow, I, I would think raffle would be the best way. Yeah. Probably unless you have somebody there that's fun to do an auctioneer that can. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a good auction. I've been to a lot of these events <laughs> where it's just fun. They auction it off at the end, and people, especially if there's drinking, it, you, you want to oh, wait yeah. towards the end so people get definitely. a little, you know. Yeah, we'll, we'll put you in touch. Yeah, let's. Yeah, we'll definitely get that going, and that's it. That's exciting. So that's going to be going on at the Enchanted Vine from 11 to 7, tomorrow. October 3rd, tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow so, the third, yeah, October third, yeah. and uh, uh, so it should be a little. Fun little of, did you guys know today's my birthday? Today, today is October. Yeah, it's birthday? my birthday. Yeah, happy birthday to me. <laughs> happy birthday! <laughs> I got lost. Happy, I didn't realize. Happy birthday! Thanks. Yeah, you know? appreciate that. So that the, was so weird. It was like I was at a time so lapse. Guess what? Treat. You know what that means? That means that Jasmine and I are the first ones to tell you happy birthday on your birthday. Oh, thanks. How man, special is that? Thank you, Jasmine. Yeah, thanks. thanks for, of course. I, but I want to say something in terms of uh, Midtown Association and uh, or Main Street, right? Because it's Midtown here, but it's Main Street. Yeah, Main Street. Is that it's, what it's it's Matt? A, uh, yep, exactly. So I was in my in laws live in Clovis and I, I visited Clovis this weekend. We haven't been since COVID started, so it's been February since I've been there. And in driving around town, uh, my father in law told me there's a, a new mural going up. And so they have a and it says it's Clovis Main Street in cool. association with I think CCC, the Clovis Community College, did one and it's this huge mural and it's their retelling of or interpretation of um American Pie by Don McLean, right? The song. Yeah. And so it's this great mural and it's um uh, there's like probably 10 different artists worked on the individual mural. Wow. And so it's really great. And um, I, I know I went to Carlsbad to talk about doing some murals down there and they had had a Main Street initiative too. So when you see these things in other towns that Rodoso has done and some of them post and maybe because of, I don't know, but you know, like Clovis, there, there's a mural there already that a uh, cool one. It's an old Buddy Holly and Elvis mural, but this one's new and fresh blood. And you go down Main Street there, the old Main Street where it's the brick road. And it's just immediately, you can't help but want to go see what it is, you know? Right. And so it's, Again, back to that idea of what it adds value-wise to the town. And mm -hmm. they're a a actually right across the street. They're starting a new brewery there that's going to be another huge wall, which all I could see was they should have a mural on that, right? Because Absolutely. it just adds to it. And so yeah. a lot of places are following suit and doing things like Rodoso has done a year ago, a year and a half now, that with the mural um, initiative. And I think it's just great. And you see the value of it anywhere you go. And mm -hmm. so that's, that's part of what Matt's with with Rodoso Main Street. Yeah, that's Midtown. what's that's what's even cool is so much of my job is going around and I do connect with all these other directors. There's 28 to uh, 30 uh, different Main Street communities across New Mexico, and connecting with uh, uh, with those directors is important to me because I get to understand what's going on in Silver City, what's mm -hmm. going on in Raton, and uh, you know, Rio is definitely a, a unique place across New Mexico. Our projects are highly visible. We'll just put it that way where yeah. a lot of people are going to see it. It needs to be on point. Yeah, I think they and, get to see the success we've had in this town, yeah. right? You guys have had with yeah. this. And, and it's the town's success, it, inevitably, right, is that all of us take pride in it, back to the ownership thing. But and, when you see that, it lets other towns realize that, wow, Rodoso can do that. We surely thank you. And um, Are we already done? Yeah, uh, unless, unless there's something else you want to chat about. Well, see, one time when I was five, I went up there and I said, no, I'm just kidding. No, we, 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 we got to keep it. No, we, we do gotta... keep it to about an hour. So. Oh, I got you. Yep. Yeah. So, well, we we do appreciate you coming in. And one, one of the big takeaways for me to, you know, continue my motivation is, you know, to work with a, a good group of to artists. To hunter. Yes. And then uh, what's cool yeah, well, about... Well, when he hangs out with me, it does up his game a lot, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Fish is saying that about me. Uh, is to... You know, I'm like 15 years older than Matt, I think. And we went shed hunting earlier this year. And I just must say that... Um, I, I really thought it would be more of a challenge, and, and instead I was in the lead looking back constantly, like, where is Matt? <laughs> On the walkie-talkies? Yeah. And he lost his, so we couldn't even find well, it. Well, oh the problem, gosh. I was slowed down just because I had so many sheds already on oh, my back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, 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 I it. didn't uh -huh. found I, any of them. I, but... I, will, I will admit, Matt did find more sheds that day, no well, doubt. It's all, it's all good, but it, it, it's cool. I, to I get... found the only brown sheds, but... Oh, no, you did find one. It, it's cool to connect with, like, the, the local unique uh, 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 people that we have around here, and what I think is cool about you, Fish, is you get involved with the community and that's what a, a lot of my peers do you know is getting involved and i think that at whatever capacity that you're good at even if it is with art uh whatever whatever it may be is you just apply it to your community and you can make a difference and, and any art right because i think that mm -hmm. um, we're talking mainly about visual art because i'm a visual artist but i think there's more than just that when it comes to art in in our town specifically you see Absolutely. people playing music 
yes. there's people that play um, out on the street or yeah. there, there was before COVID and stuff. But there would be just a couple of people that played around. And I think all that's mm-hmm. beautiful. So any type of art that that may be, I think everybody has a different stance on cre- or a different brings different creativity to the table that can sure. definitely add to our, yeah. um, our, the beauty of this area, you know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, it inspires other people to get creative and keep working. And that's what I think, you know, a lot of our guests that we bring onto the show have in common is that they're always inspiring more people to, you know, get involved and somehow, you know, create. Yeah. And I think what Matt and, and the group does uh, that's important for the area is that um, by by using a lot of local and, and uh, regional area artists and people, it, it helps give that um, sense of ownership because you're not just trapped. There, there was some great artists came in from um, Alabama and Austin, like I said, but they're here and then gone. But the people that did it from here, you mm-hmm. see it every day, you see it for the rest of your life potentially. So you have this thing of also potentially wanting to give back and do something that's like, well, it's not so much about how much I'm going to make on this, but can I do right. something that's for my community makes it better and great? And there's lots of talent here and lots of uh, creatives that can draw from that. So I hope that if anybody's listening to this that is one of those people, they can reach out to Matt and, and hopefully work on future projects and get uh, you know more variety in there and add to what is already a, a really it feels like it's steamrolling into a good positive direction. Yeah, I think you, I think you got all parties involved and on the on the same page. We're gonna we're gonna do some some damage down the road with some cool fun projects, some fun events. So awesome! Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right, yeah, well, support, support a... your local breweries this weekend and wineries. Yes, yes. You know, support local. Go check out. Just go check out Midtown or whatever wherever you're listening from, wherever that may be. Go support a local and Art business. by Fish. Do it. I'm Art by Fish on all social media. There you mm-hmm. go. Or platforms. All right. Y'all have a good weekend. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. The information you need when you need it. Village Volume on 1490 KRUI The Mountain.